Welcome back, this is Steve Ogles here and today is going to be our first painting day and, a, and what we will do today is we're going to paint a pear. I find that painting these is a, a great way of starting because you're getting form and how it turns from shadow to lightness and then, and then it'll, we can make a colour string which we'll get into a little bit later so to start with, we're going to need something to paint on. So, look, like in the other video, we made this board to paint on. You can also paint on a canvas that you buy from your art store or from some of the, the cheaper places that sell packs of, of stretch canvas for, for all that we need for today would, would be something like that as you're starting but it's also good just in case you turn out to have a masterpiece you want it to last so it's got to be acid free and must be um, a, a good surface you don't want to have things that are warped or, or out of square so have a good look at it when you buy it make sure it's acid free and it's in good shape so the next thing we're going to need is some paints now I believe you should paint with what you can afford and artist quality paints are probably the best for any situation, even learning, because you don't need, need an awful lot of it and for, for what we're going to do today, we're only going to use probably four paints, tubes of paint, and that's what you need to get. So, and, and they they will be a red, lemon yellow, and ultramarine blue. That is the three colours that we're going to use today. Re relatively cheap to buy, so if you just if you if you haven't already got them, then go and buy those, and also a tube of titanium white. Now with these four colours we will achieve something resembling those pairs there. And now we need brushes. So you can buy these little packs of brushes here. This one is specially packaged for acrylic painting and, and they have they have a square and there is a dagger brush in there, a couple more short, smaller squares and a number of rounds brushes. Relatively cheap to buy. This pack, this pack here is a different one. This one's got a this one's got a longer it's a longer flat. Then we've got a filbert, they've got a fan brush, and then they've got a round, which I think this I believe this pack will be a little bit better. I mean I, I particularly like painting in, in the square because it's you can use the edge and, and then you can go wide to make a, a, a wider brush stroke. Fan brushes are good, they're a good thing to get to get painting, but then as you go on, you will get used to what you like and then you'll start picking your own brushes if you want to, if you want to go up to using, you can, you can use oil brushes like Rosemary and Co or such like, which are quite ex reasonably expensive brushes. I tend to use the cheaper ones because I just abuse them, I smash them and bang them and push them and I go through quite a few, so if they're expensive, not a good thing to do. Now, and also the size of brushes are, if you're gonna do bigger paintings, bigger brushes. Okay, so if you're using tiny little brushes, all the time they tend to get a little bit tight. I prefer to rather be a little bit loose, as we can see here, that painting, very loose brush strokes, but it's quite appealing. And then we have gone into a little bit more detail with these with these two there, so it all depends on how you want your painting to end up. So with the way I paint, I paint lots of thin layers to build up and give it, give it that nice big rich depth and um, with, when you use like oils, you use quite thick brush strokes, which is a bit more like this one. So. We'll go through all that as we get painting and then you can take it as far as you want. You can, you can get it 
to uh, to hyper realism if you like, or you can get it as loose as just a few brush strokes to give the impression that this is a pair and that is it. So okay, so what else I use with this is is a palette. So this is this this is what I use, and it's a they call it a stay wet palette, and all it is you can get these days from all the shops and all that. This is a two and a half litre. I think it's what they use it for is putting meat in it and then to put it in the fridge. Fantastic as a palette because it keeps your paints wet for a long time. I'll just show you this one over here. This has been used for probably a month now and I can dip my finger in there and it's still wet. So, but I, I must say I do use a retarder with my paints most of the time. Better wipe that off. On. So another issue, essential paper towels. So I also use this medium, open medium from Matisse with these Matisse colours that I use. That's a retarder. You, you should only use up to about twenty percent of this to your paint, and this will keep it open for a long time. Once again, we'll go into that a bit later. So back to the palette. So. We use these paper towels, we fold them up, put them in the bottom, wet these towels, damp, not, not soaking wet, not so they're dripping. Then you get baking paper, and I've got it, I've folded it over to get two layers, and then we just push it into the palette here, just tilt it up so you can see. And it makes like a little tray inside this palette, like so. And then we paint with that, and then I keep spraying it. If you use a little mister like this, you can buy it at the art shops, and you can just, uh, you can see that, but the sprays a very fine mist on your palette, where your paints are, to keep them from drying out, because they'll, they'll dry from the outside first, to the inside. So if you keep the outside damp, they won't go off. So, but I end up using this big one, which you get from most uh, shopping places, Coles, Woolies, whatever. It um, delivers a hell of a lot of water at one time. So you're not standing there for, for 10 minutes spraying the color. You can give this a good, a good whack and it gets it done quickly. So, I mean, I'd probably use this one if I was spraying the painting, if I wanted to keep the painting a bit damp so I can blend it a little bit more. But generally, I like using this big one. So, so then we need water. So I have a little pot of water to put my brushes in. So I'll load this, I'll load this up in a second. I'll just show you. I have, when I paint, I have a rag and I have that on the side like this where my water is and like these are the at the moment the brushes that I'm using and a palette knife. Now palette knives are reasonably inexpensive these days you can go and go down to um, your art store whichever it might be and pick up one or two of these. Great for shifting the paint around and scraping stuff off or off your board or putting it on your board whatever technique you want to use with it. So for today's board of, of this size, I'll generally use these size brushes. So we've got a small round for doing a lot of detail, a larger flat brush, so that we can move over the, over the board quite quickly. And there's a couple of small ones, a fan brush, which we might be using. So it'll just be today. All you really need for today's painting will be this small round, a little bit of detail, the larger brush, and maybe another smaller brush, but we'll see how we go. Okay, now I'll just load up the three primary colours and the white on the palette. And we will get into it. So, lemon yellow, because we're going to work from, from the pair here, from the very lightest bit of yellow and we'll be working right down around into this dark area here where the shadows are which we'll mix. 
So I'll put them out like they, like they are on a colour level. So we have lemon yellow at the top. On the left side we have ultramarine blue. And then on the right side here. Oop. We will have the red. Now, colour theory is a massive part of it to, to get your head around. Um, so, a nice dog of white. Now, it's, it's a, a good idea to always keep the paints clean as well. I was sort of throw while I was doing that. So, that, back to colour theory. The colour theory is a huge thing. So, just with this alone, we can get most colours. So, and then on a colour wheel, when you look at it, the opposites are the complementary. So, so, these two here, blue, yellow, will make green. The yellow and the red here will make purple. And then the red and the blue will make violet. So the violet's the opposite to yellow. So if you ever need to knock down the yellow, it's too, it's too much, you can add violet in, into it, which, will, which is a harmonious colour as well. So when you're painting, we want to use most of these colours everywhere on the painting if we can. Okay. All right, so, so we've got that ready. Remember, we must keep spraying, keep it wet. Now, since we're not using it straight away, put the lid on here. And let's paint. Okay, for this next bit, you will only hear me and probably not see me. My arms might get in the way a little bit here and there, my shoulder. I'll try and keep those out of the way. Okay, so I've got my water, I've got my brushes. Rag to wipe my brushes out, clean that out. So, first thing to do is we need to draw our pair. Now, when we do paintings, I do emphasize that just doing it from your head is fine, but you're not going to pick up all the little intricacies of the subject that you are wanting to paint. So I always find it's good to have reference. Painting from life is, is probably one of the great things to do, um, which this here is one of the original plein air setups that I have. I, I've, got, I've refined it now over the years, but um, Painting life is a bit so if if you you can't do that you can't get a photograph. I or sometimes I use some of my um, paintings that I have still around that have got that subject in it just to do give me all the detail and the shape that I need. So then we come to drawing it and then there's composition. So the main thing in composition is generally keep things out of the centre as much as possible. You don't want the centre of interest to be smack in the middle of your painting. So if, if you put a mark in the middle and then we're going to say, well, the bottom is going to be a little bit here, so let's say one third up, and we want the top to be roughly the same, maybe a little bit more. You put another mark here, and then from that centre point to the outside is where we will have our pairs. So and now that we should have these four little marks, and when you do a pair, what it is is joining these up in a sort of random circle. This one can come out, it can be a little bit lower as you turn and come in. And then we have the base of the pear. Then we look at the top of the pear. Now the pear is a very similar shape, but smaller and longer. So this bit will come down and around and join up with that one. So then we've got this nice bit of a curve going on here. And then we do the same on this side. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
we're just getting some sort of shape down so as to get a nice looking shape and of course we will put in the stem generally always try and get things coming back into the painting so we'll have the stem coming up here around and down so there we have it and then we have a shadow we always remember where the light's coming from so our light is coming from this side here coming across so and when and when we do things that are still life we always should set the light up in this sort of fashion that if the light coming from this side this will be the light area this will be the darker area it'll just make things look a lot better and because we've got the pair on this side of the half of the of the board then we can have our shadow our cast shadow here right so now that we've got that drawing done we're ready to throw some paint on and of I should have told you earlier, this, this pencil that I'm using here is actually a watercolour pencil. You don't want to be using lead pencil on here because a lead pencil can come through your painting. So um, I, this, is, this is a pigment with the binder. If it goes in with the paint, it's a very similar material and it's not going to cause any dramas. Okay, so here we are. And there, there is the palette. I'll have it down here and I'll hold it up for you to see every now and again. Get that out of the way. Right. So, to start with, we need to the main part of this pair, the majority of the pair is a green. So, to get the green, we're going to need a bit of blue and a bit of yellow a bit more yellow there we go there we have a very dark bluey green so a little bit more so then the more yellow we put in here the different value of those two colours are going to be till we get back to a very light yellow. So we've got a graduation of a dark green all the way around to a very light green. We're not adding white as yet. White is going to be is going to be our highlight at the end. Okay, so I'll just leave it there for a minute. Now wash it out my brush. Once you have washed it out in the water and got it nice and clean, on the rag, wipe it out. You don't want excess water in your brush going into your paint. Now, so now we're going to have to do a similar thing with these colours here to get the darker, the shadow of the pair. So, a little bit of blue, a little bit of red, mix that in. And there we have an almost black. It's a more tilting towards red a bit more, add a little bit more blue, and there we go, it's almost black. So that will be our shadow on the pairs. So okay, here we go. So the shadow, whack it in. This board's this board's actually a little bit textured. Than I normally have, but we'll get away with it. As you can see, how it pulls, you can see the. Yeah, normally, I have it smooth and it just slides across. Okay, so we're pulling this through, letting the paint get thinner as we get to the end of that shadow, and then under the side of this pair here. So, this is going to be the darkest spot here. So, make sure you get plenty of paint. Put it on. 
So if we feather that this way, we'll come up here just a little bit. The light's coming across, so this will be a little bit darker around here. We'll just go with this dark for now. And there we have it. We'll get the stem in. See how I'm just using the tip and the corner of this brush and I can get quite small marks. We don't need to go with a little brush as yet. We don't need to have that much detail. A little bit more blue, a little red there. And then down into the valley there of where the stem joins. Now we want to make sure here that the darkness is on the left side and not the right side because remember the light's coming across this way. Right, so there we go. Remember this, this base is like a ball, we want to get it turning into the light so we'll just come around a bit with that. Okay, wash the brush out again. Then now we're going to go into our greens and we will start with from the darkest. That's quite light, isn't it? Let's add a little bit more blue. And it's getting a bit sticky. It's, with this light, it's quite warm. So a bit of a spray of the water. And there we go. Now if you really want to make this green darker, we can just get a touch of red. There we have quite a dark green, maybe yeah, much better. So let's get this in here because we're going to go over quite a few times. Now yeah, we're working in towards the light. Follow the shape, pulling into the darkness. And the next line is going to be a little bit, will be a little bit lighter as we're working our way down here to this leading edge. So a little bit here, a little bit here, follow the shape. Bring it into there so that blends a little bit. It's a little bit lighter. Now we can start to see the form happening. It looks like it's turning. Follow that shape. A little bit lighter. Now we're going to get to where we're going to go into this very light stuff. Light yellowy green and we're going to go around the outside. If it goes past the line that you've drawn there, it doesn't matter. And then finish off this here with the light. Now, when you look at that, this light comes, floods around the bottom of this pair. So I just drag it around a little bit so that all, it all blends together. Doesn't matter if we go out sort of line, it gets a little dark, we'll come back over that. And of course, you now the light swings around the pair at the back here. So just on that outside edge, probably a little bit too light. Go back into the dark a bit of green, and then swing around the outside here a little bit. Just pulling it around. Now the, the I don't want dead stroke sharp edges, I want it all all broken up because you never see a dead sharp line in real life when it comes to these here okay so there we are so now we're going to let that dry a bit and build up so what we'll do is I think we'll have like a, a bit of a bluey grey background so, once again, lots of blue, and we're going to put it over here, lots of red. 
a little bit of yellow here, and this is going to make a somewhat grey, as you can see there. And just to show you, we'll pick up a little bit of this white, put it at the bottom, and then see how dark to light grey. So what I would want to do is have lots. So these 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 are what we call strings of colour. So you can do this with every colour that you have and make a string from darkest to lightest, and that is called va the value. So the value of the lightest is light. Midway is, is like a number five value if you want to start using numbers, yeah, and then it, it'll go up. Da, 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 da. But um, who wants to paint by numbers? Let's just get the artistic side of this going. And we'll whack this on here. And because of this, all, we're using all those primary colours, we're in this here and in the background, so it's going to be a cohesive painting because we are using all the same colours. So I think I'll have that a little bit whiter. Now, when we come to doing other studies of other things, we can, we can paint like this pair and change it up by changing the primaries. We can use a different blue, we can use a different yellow, we can use yellow ochre, and we can use a different, a different red. You can use alizarin crimson or you can use burnt sienna and try and paint with those and see how they turn out. So, and then you'll end up finding that there's certain colours you prefer to use in your palette that you choose. Okay, so I've got a little bit more white here. So this is where the sun's shooting, or the light is shooting through here on this side. Getting around here. Nice crissy crossy brush strokes. We don't want it to be absolutely smooth. Give it a bit of interest. Okay, so now we're going to have something at the back here, we're going to have a table or such like, or a shelf or whatever. So let's get a little bit of this white and it's coming, shooting across here. Coming down onto this table. Go a little bit diagonal there, give it a bit of interest as I said. Light again. This is, and this is what I was saying earlier, how I punish brushes. I'm scrolling this in quite harshly. More white. A little bit of uh, grey we've mixed up. Keep coming around here. Coming over the edge of your shadow. It'll come underneath the pair and shoot around, a little bit darker, a bit darker, okay sorry about that, the uh, camera had a connection, okay so back into it, we're back into the white across the back here, I will grab this to have a squirt, this doesn't have to be perfect as well, we will go over it again. So we're just about done. This is what generally they call a blocking. Okay, so now we've got our blocking done. We'll have a little bit of this darker stuff here, just to throw a little bit of interest in the foreground. Not make it so obvious there, and we'll follow around the back here, making sure we get a similar colour, and of course we want to go darker. So in this bit, oops, cut in there because it's too much white. So we want to make sure this bit here is the dark, dark. 
and then now starting to fade into the light. Into the light shining across it. Hinting obviously the wall or whatever it is in the back here. Whack it on. Scrub it in. This new brush won't last long. more water on the palette. Keep mixing this the string that I've got going here. See now how the, you can see the water's dribbling down. This could be given really don't put too much water in there. No. Okay, I'm gonna get this have to get this done, this bit done very quickly. This is to achieve not blocking because the battery is just about to die. Okay, so trying to keep this fairly thin yeah, I like to get thin paint on and build up the layers. If this dies, I will see you when I've got that battery charged and then we'll start working over the top of the blocking. Just about done. Okay, great, we'll see you in a little bit. Can't stop fiddling. White is just too white. Just get the brush, wiggle it, boggle it. Okay, so we'll just let that dry now and we'll come back to it. Let's brush out, put your lid on your palette so that stays wet for the next stage. Okay, we're nice and dry. Put the brush, wet the paint, and we're going to work into this background here again. <coughs> a bit of red, a bit of blue, a bit more blue, nice dark. Just to give this a bit of life. And around here, a bit more white. Still coming underneath what we had done before, a little bit of that showing through. Yeah. We're just coming over the top, building up interest. Thank you. 
short. I mean, a little bit of soft edges with the shadow. It's not too bad, I quite like that. Wash brush it out. Bit of too intense. Too intense. Wash that out. So now we can even spray that a bit. There we go. Liven that paint back up again. We want this to be just a little bit. Suggestive of where we want the eye to go. Blending the background because the paint is still a little wet. Around here, more paint. Light streaming across. Makes that quite interesting. Darker. Because the light is hitting, going to hit this side of the pair, so this side needs to be a tad darker. So light against dark, dark against light. Same thing happening here with this dark, have that light where this is light, we'll have this dark. So we'll just add a little bit of something here. That's an interest. Alright. Now back to the pair, and then I drop down to the this small brush. of this into the palette. mixing together, we're getting this brown, which I'm not too worried about because we'll be using that to use on the stalk. So the lightest part of the green building up the look we're achieving, trying to achieve I should say. Blue. We don't want a blue pair, do we? 
because that lemon yellow is quite transparent. We can go over the top and still have that green look because yellow and blue make green. So now I like this one a little bit more blue. Make this darker green. A bit more blue. Because as it dries, it will get darker. front edge bending around the bottom here so finger again it's, it looks like it's actually sitting on the table or the little bench or whatever we've got there. Now pick up straight white. The light's coming across here. Put in a few of these highlights. Now, with this, we can just keep going over and over and over, layer upon layer, and building up this bed. But since we're just using the primary colours here, Chuck in a little bit of brown because they did, did have it. Brown in here because pears do have a little bit of brown in them. They're not always green and yellow. This brown and red is always good to have in them. Just because red is more attractive to the eye. Constable always had a little dog of red somewhere in this painting. I'm just breaking up this in the back here. You don't want straight lines of colour on the broken and I think there we have our pair. So back to bigger brush again. Let's get a bit of this light streaming under the pair. Shooting off here, picking up light off of something that was there. Light coming around. Trying to get in there. Shadows always have a light bit in the middle. Finishing touch now, thin brush here. Yeah, I think it's about number two. I think it's a watercolour brush. Blue, red, to get out of dark. Stalk. Right there. Let's have a little bit of darkness, dark grain. Down this side, don't. Little dogs. Layer it and layer it. 
it's still a little wet. If you're, if you're going to redo some more coats over, which I probably would to keep bringing out as much as I can of that, of that pair. I can see here there's probably this highlight could come around a little bit more, accentuating the shape of it. And it gradually disappears. This is the mass of the body of the pair. There we go. Now we can just keep layering up, layering up, layering up. Let's start that side. Okay, I think I'll leave it there and you get the idea of, of how you can easily paint a pair with your basic um, primary colours, which is what the titanium white, um, the cadmium red, lemon yellow and ultramarine, ultramarine blue and we can get quite a few mixes out of that to end up something like that. So hopefully this is, so I'll just get my face in the way here and I'm ho hopefully this has inspired you to do a bit of painting and um, we will see you in the next one and we'll just add some more colours and we'll do something a little different. Okay, but, but um, I would say do this three, four, six, seven times if you want. Try different colours, different ways see how it turns out, learn from it each time, and you'll end up with a cracking painting. Okay, thanks for coming with me on my journey. Right, bye-bye.